What's up everybody, it's Instructor Smiley. Thank you guys for clicking on this video. Today, we're gonna be going into my full thoughts and review on the Swamp Fox Optics Kraken. Um, a little bit more in-depth review. Again, thank you guys for clicking on the video. Um, if you guys have not done so already, please like and subscribe and leave a comment on what you guys think about where this video is going to go. Or leave a comment at the end on how you felt the video went. But without further ado, let's jump into the video. So uh, the last video I did was the Kraken overview, kind of an out of the box and what I saw from the jump and how I felt about it. Now I have about five to 600 rounds through this optic and I can give you guys a little bit more in-depth review of this optic. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the things that I like first, and then I'll go to the things that I'm not a huge fan of. So number one, price point. Everybody loves an affordable optic. Um, right now you have your Romeo 2s, your Steiner MPSs, your Aimpoint Acros, if you guys can find them anywhere, they're ghosts to me right now, I haven't seen any available, and your Hollow Suns 509Ts, as well as your EPSs. Uh, as far as uh, closed, emitter, closed emitter optics go. And then you have your Kraken. The Kraken is at the bottom of the list as far as affordable, or at the top of the list as far as affordability goes. It is the cheapest by far for your pockets. All right, that is huge for me because I know a lot of people are not willing or a lot of people are shopping around to find their favorite or their top of the line optic. Coming in at a price point like that, I can't fight it. I'm gonna buy one every time. Um, it's not gonna kill me. And it will give me an idea of, okay, I really like this. I'm going to stick with it, buy another maybe, or maybe I need to go ahead and sell it, give somebody else a deal like I got a deal, and go ahead and upgrade to something a little bit more expensive, if that's what I feel. But I'm going to tell you right now from jump, I don't think anybody will. Um, so price point is definitely huge for me. Next, I'm going to talk about the buttons, the up and down buttons on the side. They're absolutely massive um, with gloves on, not even looking. If you feel, you can like, oh, that's top, boop, 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 go up. And now you have your brighter setting. So the buttons on the side were huge for me. I loved it, enjoyed that. That's another positive for me. Uh, I like the size of it. Um, some people have commented like, oh, it's so ugly, this, that, and the other. Well, let's be real. Almost every close emitter is ugly. They're not really aesthetically pleasing. But I think Swan Fox did their best with trying to make it aesthetically pleasing. They put the Kraken logo on the side of it. They have the Swamp Fox logo on the top. They give it kind of a downward slope and a, nice, a lot of nice little cuts to the optic, which is good for them trying to make something that is not really aesthetically pleasing more aesthetically pleasing. So that's a pro for Swamp Fox right there. Um, wind adjustments, elevation adjustments are very, very similar to the Justice or any of the other optics out on the market. Um, here's one thing that I kind of caught that, um, I think is a huge positive. It almost looks like the glass is triple layered inside of this optic. So you have your main optic body and then inside you have your secondary body. And last but not least, you have one more layer before it gets to the glass. And I think that is Swamp Fox showing you and telling you that this thing is going to be absolutely tank proof. All right. Um, which is a positive for the customer. I definitely plan to move this to a rifle eventually. I mean, they're gonna have a canter at the 12 o'clock. We all know how rifles get when you start running them really, really hard. Uh, you're in these weird positions, shooting under vehicles, shooting over stuff, it smack things, walls, all types of stuff. If you ever ran a rifle, you understand what I'm talking about. So having that added layer of protection is super nice for the user to understand, okay, I can kind of not have to worry about messing with my optic because that's the last thing people wanna worry about when they're in either real world scenarios, real world situations, or even training. Um, shout out to my friend, Tactical Rooster. He actually throws his rifle when it's un uh, unloaded. He throws it because in his mind, if his rifle breaks off of just throwing it, then he doesn't have a good rifle. So optics go the same for me. I think you need something super durable. Um, with the closing mirror, that's kind of the biggest point of it as well. Between being durable and not letting the uh, outside environment affect it. So rain, water, dust, all that stuff. Um, if you guys watched when Swamp Fox was releasing this, they showed you, they ran over it, they dropped it, they like slammed it, they took it and boom, threw it underground. They froze it, they fully submerged it in water, the whole nine. I think they lit it on fire to show you the consumer that this optic is well worth the money. Now, with that being said, these are all machine parts, all these optics. They go through their testing process, but none of them are ever going to last forever. Everything has its breaking point. Some 
optics breaking points a lot higher than others and some are not. Um, I do know one YouTuber specifically had to get two Krakens because when he decided to fully submerge his in water, um, water broke through the seal. Now, I'm speaking on one YouTuber versus however many customers Swamp Fox has that plan to do that. Um, me personally, if you guys have been following me, you know that's not my forte. I don't believe in taking my stuff and fully pushing it to its limits because I just don't have money to spend to buy a new one and I don't feel like calling them and telling them, hey, I, I need to use my warranty, I fully submerged in some water. Um, I'll let the other YouTubers do that until I get a little bit more money, all right, or whatever to afford some of this stuff. So keep that in mind, everything has its breaking point. I don't want you guys to sit there and say that. I'm like, oh, I don't want it. The optic's not good. No. It might have just been one or two bad optics out of a bunch. So, um, aside that, moving forward onto things I like. The refresh rate was nice. Uh, running it on my staccato, that's what I had it on originally. There was a couple of things that I noticed. Um, I noticed that as I was shooting it, I could see the red dot bouncing, but there was no flicker. Like, it wasn't a straight line. It just was up, down, up, down. Um, didn't notice it on my 320. So I'm just going to assume it's just because the, the way the staccato shoots, I can just catch the dot. I can't really give an in-depth explanation on why it does that, but that was the one weird thing I noticed about it. But those are most of the things that I like. Um, another thing, it does come with plates, optic plates. It comes with one for an MOS slide and then it comes with an RMR adapter plate. Now we're going to move into things that I don't like. Uh, or I'm not a huge fan. I won't say I don't like because they're not horrible. Just things that I'm like, eh, I wish they weren't there. It could have been done a little bit better. One are the plates. Um, so the plate is massive. And I'll say this. So far, I don't think I've seen any closed emitter optics sit flush or sit low enough to co-witness with your iron sights. So they're, again, on par with all the other closed emitter optics. I just wish I would have seen something a little bit better. Right? So like, hey, we know you can't co-witness. Boom. You can call witness with the crack and i think that would have given it one or two points over some of these other close emitters but again it is what it is you can't <laughs> you don't get a co-witness like all the other ones um but the plates do sit super high so right now i have it sitting on my 320 on a norso slide this was cut for an rmr so i threw the rmr adapter plate on there doesn't look crazy in the video when you see me running it on my staccato my staccato already has a dawson precision plate on it and it's cut for an rmr so I had to go Dawson Precision Plate on top of Swamp Fox Optics RMR Plate with the Optic on it. So it sits super high on the staccato. Not a huge fan of that at all. It was not aesthetically pleasing. It was actually very, very weird to look at. Um, didn't have any issues though with the mounting option. It did not come loose. It wasn't falling off. So I can kind of speak to the plates as they work. Um, I didn't do any drop test to actually test it. This is just from shooting it. So the recoil and then I slammed it a couple times against the pole didn't loosen up or anything. So that pro con, you be the judge of that. Um, I don't like how high the plates are. Uh, I believe Calculated Kinetics is releasing or has already released a thinner plate. So I think that is super nice already that the aftermarket is looking for the end user to do that. One thing I do want to go back a little bit, like whenever you mount this, um, it's a little bit different from some of the other ones that I've seen. There are two recoil posts inside of the plate and they kind of sit like a puzzle piece into the optic. My hollow sun only has one. So I think Swamp Fox was looking a little bit ahead there, having the two points of contact versus the one for that added their ability to the optic mounting system. That's a huge plus for them. Good job, Swamp Fox Optics, if that's where you're going. Again, I'm just a YouTuber, don't know much about that. That's just where my mind is going. Um, but back to the things that I'm not a huge fan of, the plates are one and where the battery is located is another. It's located on the right side and it's kind of bulky and definitely adds to the visual aspect of the optic. So whenever you're presenting a pistol and you're shooting, you can definitely see it on the right side. I'm left eye dominant. So it's on the right side of the optic and it's kind of distracting depending on how long you've been shooting. It doesn't bother me too much now that I've been shooting it for a little bit, but in the beginning, I definitely was not a fan of it. So those are some things I liked and disliked. Aside that, there wasn't anything that I disliked about it. The plates, like I said, were a little bit ag aggravating to see how high it was, especially if I had to go plate to plate and then the battery cap. Besides that, there wasn't any issue. Um, I think Swamp Fox did a really good job 
at trying to make this as aesthetically pleasing as possible. I think they took their time in releasing it to make sure that they minimized the actual issue that they would have with it. Like I mentioned, you had the one uh, YouTuber who did have issue with it. I believe Swamp Fox sent them two out or um, they sent them one out each time for a new one. So that'll bring me to that. Understanding warranties with some of these companies. If you get something that is faulty or doesn't work, call the company, get a new one. Don't just go ahead and crap on the company from there. You may again have one of the bad ones from a batch of a thousand or a million or however many Swamp Fox made. You may not have one of the perfect ones or one of the more um, quality control inspected items. Stuff happens. It is what it is. You don't have to go crapping at a company because yours has an issue. Check it out. If you get four or five, three, and they're bad, all right, now you can kind of have your opinion and develop it from there. And that's when you kind of give, got to give uh, feedback to the optic company. Hey, this is happening. I'm sure they go ahead and put that into account and they try to fix it. We all saw the issues with the original Acro. So keep that in mind. Um, but besides that, there's not much for me to say about this. Um, it's on par, it's affordable. It does everything it needs to as far as a close emitter goes. And I mean, I don't know what to say. It's out there. Uh, in the future, I plan to do a versus. Um, I'm waiting to see if I can get my hands on a Steiner NPS. That is also another popular close emitter optic that I've been seeing a lot to see which of the three between the Hollis and ACSS, the Swamp Fox Kraken and the NPS kind of have the best of all worlds. The all around best one so that is coming in the future but for now that is it thank you guys for watching um if you have any comments or questions about the kraken go ahead and ask me in the comment section again if you guys do want a kraken if you're like yo i need one this is dope you guys can use parallel 22 at checkout to save you some money off um definitely like comment subscribe share the video it helps the channel a lot if you guys have been watching my channel and you are subscribed already and you guys are enjoying my 365 series video. I will be doing a video here soon on my 365 XL Spectre Comp. This is not the official Spectre Comp. This is my, in quotation marks, build it at home Spectre Comp. I'm running an FDES slide with an Icarus grip. I'll be doing a review on the entire gun and then the grip and the slide separately because this gun has a lot in it and there's a lot that needs to be spoken about. So we'll definitely talk about that. But for now, Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoy. Have a good one.